Hey, how you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I'm taking a look at some more knockoff Lego minifigures, or minifongers as I call them. I recently picked up another shipment of $1 figures off of eBay. I found a bunch that I had just laying around in storage, as well as I had a few knockoff figures on my Marvel board already. I'm going to give these guys a second look, because while I do plan on making an even bigger Marvel board, yeah, even bigger than this guy, I'm running out of room currently, and every space counts. So, it's our job today to see if any of these figures are up to par of an actual LEGO minifigure. But, before we do any of that, I actually have one real figure I want to show you guys. I recently picked up a leaked copy of the Captain America Endgame figure. Here he is in his new white suit. I think the printing is nice, but the coolest part is finally LEGO made the head and helmet piece separately. Now, I know a lot of people don't like when LEGO prints a peach face on a dark colored head but I think the print quality is good enough and is enough contrast. Now that I have an extra Captain America figure, when the sets come out, I'll be able to take his head and helmet and put it onto a traditional Captain America body to make a really nice looking figure. But I'll have to wait until April to do that because that's when the sets come out and I already plan on buying all of them because that was so much fun last time and I really had a blast doing it. Okay, now it's time for the knockoff minifigures. Usually I do this part of the vlog at my kitchen table but it's a mess right now, that's why I have this table in front of me. Let's start off with the ones I have in storage. A lot of these are actually Fox Marvel minifigures. Now, LEGO only made two sets based off of the X-Men. Most of these figures' designs are based off of their look in the LEGO Marvel Superhero game. So we do have a, a, a point of comparison. Also, if you're hearing extra background noise, that's because I have Mimu's battery-operated toy playing. She was meowing like crazy because she wanted attention. All right, up first is Doctor Doom. I think he was the other character featured in the original Lego X-Men sets. But don't hold me to that, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this could easily pass for a real figure. It might actually be the real figure, I'm, I'm not sure. This is kind of cheating. The chest design is really nice, it's simple but effective, and it lines up a lot with Lego's modus operandi of design. I think he's real. But if not, he could very easily pass for real. How about the Silver Surfer? This is a really interesting design. The eyes are a little bit too high on the head, that's the dead giveaway for me. But I do it the surfboard, the color and the sheen is super nice on this figure. Uh, I've seen a couple variations of this in chrome, but they go for like $20 online. But for this $1 variant, it's not bad. Couldn't pass it over a figure, the, the, the face is a dead giveaway. Alright, how about Mystique next? This is a clean looking figure. Uh, the patterning on her chest print is super nice, the hair is downright perfect. There's a lovely alternate face on the back of her head. Yeah, this could very easily pass for a real figure. Deadpool. Deadpool does exist in real form, but this is a knockoff version of him. And I think this version of Deadpool falls into the trap of having too much on the figure. The design is too complicated. There's too much sheen. Everything has a bit too much gloss on it. And I think there's just too much to it. The original Lego Deadpool has a really simple design, just a belt buckle, a belt, and a couple uh, chest accessories. This has way too much on it. Is it good looking? Yes. Can I kind of see that it's all a decal that's been printed on this? Yeah, it's a little bit off-centered and crooked and it's, it looks fine. It would not pass through a real figure. It does not look like an actual Lego design. Wolverine. This is an alternate version of Wolverine. I think the one the set is more comic accurate. Well, this one is more movie accurate. It has his white, uh, white beater on, his dog tags, and his silver claws. The hair piece already existed, so of course it's going to look perfect. Um, this is simple enough. The dead giveaway for me is the color of the flesh tone on the body is way too dark and doesn't even match the face. So that's a dead giveaway for me that this is not a real figure. Also, there's a bit too much sheen on the chest. All right, here we go. Now we're entering the bad territory. This is Apocalypse. I think he looks worse in Lego form than he did in the movie. Uh, the head, I can't even decipher any designs on it. The, the chest place is way too complicated. Everything, there's just too much and there's no actual form to it. This looks like, yeah, just too much. All right, Archangel. Everything is looking good except for the face. The face is uh, a dead giveaway in coloration and the red lines on his face, the, the expressions, the cheekbones, it doesn't match what actual Lego colors are, and it comes off as cheap looking fake. But the body print is super nice. 
with some really good detail on it. Storm! This is trying to match the official figure, and I think it does a darn good job. This can very easily pass for a real figure. The portions of the face are wonderful. The design is simple enough. I think I think that's the key to making knockoff minifigures. Make sure your chest design is simple but effective. There's, there's a, a balance between adding too much detail and adding just enough that you know what it's supposed to be. We have Professor X in a wheelchair that's actually been built. It's a brick-built wheelchair made out of pieces. It's not a uh, custom mold. I think by this point, the Lego wheelchair wasn't made yet. The figure is gorgeous. I love the green suit. The face is wonderful, just enough detail lines so you get the fact that it's old, but it's not overbearing. And the coloration and thickness of those lines is perfect. This is what separates Archangel from uh, Professor X, is that the lines in the face are cleaner and thinner on this one and darker and bolder on this one. And they make less sense as to why they're there on Archangel. All right, how about Rouge. Rogue. This is a pretty intricate design. I think, the, I think the face is nice, except the eyes are a bit too big and a bit too black. There's also a little bit of, of haziness in the eyebrows, as if the print's been smeared a little bit. This one's good too. Forgive me if I'm, I'm forgetting this character's name because she was only in Apocalypse for about five minutes. Psylocke? Psylocke. Um, yeah, she's fine. Face is a little bit awkward looking. Chest print is nice. I don't know why they make her a figure, because she didn't do much in the movie anyway. Uh, Iceman! Iceman's a cool looking figure. I, I like the fact that the X-Men belt crosses from the leg print up to the body print. The arm printing is a little bit excessive, I don't know what it's there for. And the face doesn't really match the body color. That's a dead giveaway for me. Other than that, this one's okay. I think a bit too excessive. Bishop! Yeah, it's fine. I, I, this printing is nice, the coloration's okay. It's a bit faded already, and the detail work is minimal on the chest, which is good. Uh, the face proportions are pretty spot on. So yeah, this one could pass, I think. Kitty Pride. This is okay looking. There's not a lot of line work on the X belt, which is the only kind of giveaway for me, other than the face. The two lines underneath the eyes to make her look angry don't come off well, and I don't, and I don't think Lego would do that. All right, how about a big fig? We have the Juggernaut. I think big figs are even harder to get right in terms of making them look real because the plastic feels cheaper, the printing feels off, and even though we get a custom head mold, which is really nice of them, this looks super cartoonish and silly looking. So yeah, this couldn't pass for an actual figure, but kudos to you guys for trying to make a custom big fig. So that takes care of the X-Men. How about some Fantastic Four? We have all four of them, including two versions of Johnny Storm. Reed Richards. This is perfect. This is darn right perfect. I love the fact that they use the woody legs for his stretchy ability. The white streaks in his hair are wonderful. The face print is happy and jolly. I think the, the face is pre-existing, but that's okay. And the print is minimal. This looks just like the figure in the, in the uh, video game, and I love it. And that's kind of the, actually the case with all these Fantastic Four figures. I think Sue Storm also looks incredible. I love the face print. I love the I love the chest print. I love everything. Uh, Johnny Storm is the only one I kind of take a little bit of issue with, at least on the minifigure side, because of again those lines on his face. They're a dead giveaway. Uh, the flame on version of Johnny Storm looks fantastic. I like the fact that they went all out with this, all of it done in, in uh, translucent orange. And there's a wonderful headpiece that gives him that fire head. And for me, the only one that doesn't really make the cut is the thing. Again, knockoff big figs are really hard to make. And while I really appreciate giving this figure printing throughout the entire body, they give it that rock-like texture, which is super cool looking. The face print looks really uncomfortable. There's no top of the head, it's just a stud. There's no hair piece or a rounded piece. I don't think Lego would do that. If it wasn't for this guy, and the fact that actually the head uh, comes off, which is not common in big figs. If it wasn't for this guy, I'd say Marvel's First Family has the perfect knockoff minifigure series. All right, how about some more knockoff figures? These are some I just ordered. They are all based on Ant-Man and the Wasp, which only had one set and three figures. So hoping we get some cool characters out of this one. Oh God. Let's start off with this guy, it's Hank Pym and his civilian look. Uh, immediately looking at the face print, 
it looks a bit too scrunched up. It's a bit too small of a face print, which is a bit of a bummer because I really wanted this figure to be good. And we also get, with this figure, a custom prop. We get a, a miniaturized version of Hank Pym's lab building, which, let me see how this looks when it's all put together. That's pretty cute looking. It's simple. It doesn't really have much to do. It's just kind of a couple pieces put together. In fact, actually, the more I look at it, the more I realize how dumb this looks. Let's keep with the civilian theme. Let's move on to Hope Van Dyne. This is a much better face print. It looks a bit more proportional. The size of it's right and it's in the right place on the face, so that's a good sign already. Ooh, these are nice details. We get the red and blue shrinky growy discs. This looks pretty, pretty darn good as a figure. Uh, the, I mean, uh, the flesh on her chest does not really match the flesh on her face, but that's really the only giveaway. Other than that, this is a darn good looking minifigure. Bill Foster, the Lawrence Fishburne character in the movie. This is super complicated looking. I think it's a bit too complicated looking. Um, this figure is fine. It's too much detail work. It's too much. I don't even know what the character is supposed to be doing in that man suit. I don't think he ever was in one in the movie. And if he was, I'm sorry, I messed that up. Next, how about Janet Van Dyne in her Quantum Realm outfit with her uh, face cover and her robes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's not a good looking face print. It looks way too tiny in the eyes, but big in the mouth. Okay, the alternate face looks better. Um, I think this figure has too much line work, too much black lines on the chest print. This one is a, a step below fine. All right, so far we're not doing so well on these Ant-Man sets. Okay, how about we have another Bill Foster figure, an entirely different face print. So that's strange. And this one looks a little bit better actually. Still not good because the portions are way off. I'm never gonna mount a Bill Foster figure on the board, so it's not even worth building. We also get a bunch of random pieces, which I think we're supposed to build a, a large Lego brick. It's supposed to be a one by one brick, I think. So I think we do this. Yeah, a giant one by one brick. I like it. Although I don't like that XINH is printed on the brick. All right, who's next? How about Wasp? We have some fairy wings. We have really complex back print and front print. And the helmet, I'm... The helmet didn't fit the figure. Do I like the yellow Ant-Man helmet more than the official Wasp helmet? Yes. Do I like when helmets fit the figures perfectly? Yes. Two more left. Hank Pym in his Quantum Realm suit. God, this face, guys, your faces. They're not good, they're comical. You guys were doing so much better last time. I, I, I think it comes down to when they have an actual figure to copy off of. But the helmet, I love the helmet. They used a red version of the yellow jacket helmet. But does it fit? No, it doesn't fit. Guys, I get it. These are $1 figures, but it's not even worth $1 at that point. Lewis, we get uh, Scott Lang's friend. And yeah, there we go. This is looking good so far. I love the expression on his face. I think the proportions are pretty good. I wish the uh, the smile was a little bit lower on his face in between the mustache and beard, but I think it still looks good. We finally got a good one, guys. This one is a good looking figure. This could pass for a real one. And I would actually consider mounting this because I would love to have Lewis on my Marvel board. Also, we have another brick to build. Once again, guys, if you want to make things that pass for Lego, don't put your logo on it. Overall, I think this package was mostly a failure. You know, I spent $7 for eight figures. Only two of them were that good. Yeah, I'm a little bit let down by this. All right, it's time for the final mini finger test. These are figures that were previously on my Marvel board, and it's time to see if they can hold on to their spot. Let me move, get away from Captain America. All right, up first is Odin. Looking back at this figure, I'm really not a fan of the face print. I think the beard looks sloppy. It's just a silver sheen with some parallel lines drawn on it. And again, we have those fake looking bold red lines on his face for wrinkles. I don't think this figure can hold on to a spot in the Marvel board. So, Odin is out. How about this guy, Armin Zola? This figure is 
gorgeous. I this one still holds its spot. The line work on the face is nice. The the expression on his face is dour and sad, but gorgeous. And while the chest print is a little bit faded, the, the tuxedo with a bow tie, I can always get a different tuxedo on bow tie. This one holds its spot. Armin Zola stays. Agent Coulson. Now this minifigure was not a $1 knockoff. This one actually cost me about $30. And this knockoff, in my mind, looks better than the real Coulson figure. One, I think the face design on the custom looks cleaner, especially the comp piece. On the real figure, it's big, funky, and almost a little bit faded. While there is no alternate face on the custom, on the real, there's a face with him with the glasses on, and that's the one I usually mount. But the real detail that separates the real from the fake, and that pushes the fake just above that last step, is the ID badge. On the real figure, the ID badge is a generic agent badge. On the knockoff, it's the actual shield logo. It's his shield ID. And that just pushes this figure just that extra mile and makes this probably one of the best, if not the best custom figure I've ever seen. However, I think both of these can find a spot on my board because I probably should mount the real one too, but the custom deserve a spot as well. So both these guys stay. All right, how about a big fig? Abomination from the Incredible Hulk, which is kind of cool because you've really never seen merchandise from the Incredible Hulk. It's kind of like Marvel forgot about it. I like the additions to the big fig mold that Abomination has, including the spikes on the back of the arms and feet, and the spine on his back is protruding out, which is pretty accurate to the, to the, uh, the character. However, the face print is really weird looking, especially with the domed head. Also, the head comes off again, which is dead. Mimo! My goodness, stop it, stop it. As much as I'd love to have an Abomination figure on my board, I'm gonna put this one back to storage. Up next is Spider-Man in his homemade costume. Obviously this costume is near and dear to my heart because I made my own version of it. And this figure keeps winning me over it every time I look at it. This is another $1 figure and it's gorgeous. The face print is clean, the chest print is nice, I think there's enough wonderful here to keep this figure on the board. Malekith, the Dark Elf. I think this figure is wonderful. The face print is simple enough that, you know, if you were doing a transition from light to dark, this is how you do it in Lego. The body print is simple, but effective. This is a gorgeous design. And I love the uh, elf ears on the headpiece. This one stays too. Kaecilius. This is another custom figure that costs more than $1, and it shows. It's a gorgeous design. There is enough delicacy in the line work and the chest print that keeps it complex but still manageable and has enough forms that you, your eye isn't lost in the design. And it matches really close to the Wong, Mordo, and Doctor Strange figures that already are released. So yeah, this one stays. Iron Man, Mark 1. This one I'm kind of cheating by putting in this collection because we're actually getting a real figure based on the Mark 1 suit in the upcoming Endgame sets. So I might hold on to this one and, and compare it to the real one, see if both deserve a spot. And if not, I imagine the real one might take the cake. But I'm still holding out hope because this is a darn good looking knockoff figure for $1. And how about Heimdall? This is another one of those really good $1 figures. I love the gold accents, I love the design, the sword, the headpiece, the chest piece. Almost everything was custom made for this. And again, for $1, this is incredible. So yeah, Heimdall stays. So at the end of the day, I think the only figure worth adding to the So at the end of the day, I think the only figure worth adding to the board is Lewis. Now I know you're thinking, what about the Fantastic Four? I thought about it but I'd be hard pressed to only mount three of the four family members. Without the thing, I can't mount all four of them. So yeah, mini fongers, the $1 ones, you're really hard pressed to find good, good figures because you can't judge the designs online because they don't match the print. So you kind of have to take that risk and spend the $1 to get them to see if they're worth it. But when they are worth it, you get a good figure for $1 out of it. And when you spend that extra money, you get some really good looking figures. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.